debt. It can feel like a never-ending cycle of past due bills, high interest rates, and even collection calls. You want a way out, but most companies only deal with certain kinds of debt or offer quick fixes and even dangerous solutions that can destroy your credit and put you right back where you started. At Family Credit Management, we do things differently. First, we'll review your credit report to access who and what you owe. Then, we'll create a repayment plan that's in budget, lowers interest, and eliminates fees. We'll give you a roadmap out of debt once and for all by consolidating all your unsecured debt from all your creditors in our debt management program. You pay us once a month and we work with your creditors to take care of the rest. For over 20 years, we've been helping clients get back on track to financial independence. Now it's your turn. Get your free quote today. Hello everyone, my name is Erica, you're watching CAN TV, and I am from Family Credit Management. We are a nonprofit uh, organization that deals with debt consolidation, money management classes, financial wellness and education overall. If you want more information, you can visit us at our website at www.familycredit.org, or you can also call us at one 800 9943328 and one of our certified credit counselors will be happy to speak with you if you have any further questions. Today I wanted to talk to you a bit about getting a job and writing a resume which is the key to getting into that interview to land you the job that you need. As financial experts, we talk to people every day who are in difficult financial situations, maybe even unhappy with their current pay or their role, and it's so crucial to have that financial independence and wellness, and obviously having that regular income is a major part of that. So in more effort to help people get into the roles that will pay them what they, what they deserve and also bring you happiness, we want to give you some ideas on how to tweak your resume. Whether you're unemployed and you're looking, or you're maybe just wanting to bro broaden your horizons and find a job that is, makes you more happy, which is just as important, even if the pay is the same. But to have that confidence and independence is what we want to try and help you achieve. So your resume is where we're going to start. It's probably the only thing that will ever be an overview of you completely and it's the first thing that the employer is going to see and that first impression is very 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 crucial so even if you're not currently looking having your resume up to date is just the opportunity in case something falls into your lap and you need to apply for that position that dream job that suddenly comes up uh, it's good to be to be ready and to be prepared my position at family credit management I actually review candidates who are applying for positions at our company, which means I've seen thousands of resumes. I also help people who are in need of resume review, so even people not applying, I also review their res resume and give them tips uh, specific to the job that they're applying for, which is key. You should always review your resume for every single job that you're applying to. It should be specific to the role that you're trying to get. So in that in that process, maybe in a week, I might see 200 resumes, and it could be for one single position. So think about that and what you're up against. You have this limited opportunity to make a great impression, and you shouldn't take it too personally if you don't get those interviews and feel like, well, I have the experience. Why isn't it coming across in the way that I want it to? So there are some tips, and there are things that I see every day um, that disqualify resumes or that impress me and I want to tell you what those things are and then hopefully you'll be able to do the work yourself and reformat your resume and have a very impactful one. So because sometimes a hiring manager has to look through countless resumes, unfortunately as it is, they don't have a lot of time to spend reading and reading your resume. In fact, the average amount of time that a hiring manager might spend looking at your resume is up to 10 seconds. 
sometimes as little as five. And they're looking for things, unfortunately, to probably disqualify your resume. They'll have two piles, a reject pile and a review pile. And so what you really want is to have those impactful things just pop out immediately that will put you in the review pile. And then the hiring manager may delve a little bit deeper and actually look more into your experience and hopefully give you a call to get that interview. So what are the things that might immediately disqualify you? Well, statistics show that spelling mistakes and grammar mistakes are immediately apparent to, to hiring managers and is something that, well, if your resume appears flawed and it's a represent representation of you, then it's quite possible they're going to view you as flawed and possibly push you to the reject pile just because of a misspelling of a word. It looks like we have a caller, our first caller. Do you have a question for me today? I do. Um, I was actually writing out my resume and I wasn't sure exactly how long it should be. Uh, could you give me any recommendations? That's a, an excellent question and a great point. I see so many resumes that are unnecessarily long. You really ought to keep it down to one page and it'll, it'll show a few things about you. Firstly, how good you are at being concise, formatting, giving them the direct information that you know that they need. Um, I've heard a general rule that if you have less than 15 years experience in any one area, it should fit within a page. You should really only be considering going on to two pages if your relevant experience is coming up to 20 years. Bear in mind the word I'm saying, relevant. An, a resume is not a complete exhaustive list of everything that you've done and your hobbies and interests, although those things might come into play in the interview to give you that extra X factor that makes them want to hire you. Your resume should be a brief overview of the job experience that you have, which is relevant to the role you're applying to, as well as any education or qualifications that are relevant. Always reread and go over it again. Pull out anything that's that's fluff, that is repetitive, that isn't new information. Like I said, the hiring manager may not ever even look at your second or sometimes I see third and fourth pages. Now on that, you're getting to closer to something that's like a curriculum vitae, which would be an entire overview of everything. You don't want to submit that to a position unless they have specifically asked for it. And that is typical more in I would say uh, educational fields where you have to be very heavily qualified and experienced, they may ask for that. But I would have to say 99% of the time the hiring manager does not want to see your exhaustive experience. So one page is a general rule. And I'm hoping I can give you some tips on how to narrow that down and make it one very impactful page. So going back to the things that might immediately disqualify you, as I mentioned, poor grammar, punctuation, this is a representation of yourself. Take great care on how you present yourself and have someone else check it over for you. If you're, you may not be seeing the things that you typed through very quickly and, or you're just not great at grammar or punctuation, so have someone you know who has an eye for it to check it over for you. Another thing that I see quite often is a long summary at the start of your resume. Bearing in mind that they may only look at your resume for 10 seconds, they're probably not going to use that 10 seconds to read a long paragraph. They're going to skip straight to your job descriptions, your titles at your positions. So a summary is debatable of whether or not you should have it, and if you do, Keep it to one to two sentences, short sentences maximum. And it should say something relevant. It should not say something that is just a list of self-glowing phrases like hard work or punctual, because there is no evidence in that paragraph to pr prove that that's who you are. The evidence will be in your job titles and the accomplishments that you achieved. So use a summary to talk about your objective. Maybe most of your experience is in the medical field as a receptionist, but you're really seeking to 
branch into social media, use the summary as an opportunity to explain your progression and why what you're looking for, the job you're applying to, seems a bit different than what your job experience is. Also, make sure you review that summary for every single position. The amount of times that I see somebody saying, you know, that they're looking for a position in finance and they're applying for a call center representative position, and it's just obvious that they're only going to be leaving in a short amount of time if I did hire them because it's not what they're looking for. I see we have another caller. Hi, I have an interview for my dream job in a couple of days. Can you give me some suggestions on how to wow them so I get the job? Well, congratulations on landing that interview. You are a few steps ahead of us already. Um, yeah, definitely. It's a good idea to have a few things in mind and preparation is key. So first of all, not just turning up on time for the interview, but turning up early. Oftentimes businesses will have forms that they want you to fill out, um, maybe even another application. And even though you've already given them your resume, sometimes they want you to write out your experience again. And this can take 20 minutes possibly. Don't make the interviewer wait for you. They probably have other interviews to, to go for after you. And if those are on time, yours will be the one to be cut short. So arrive early. Do your research into the company as well, even taking note of their style, how the people dress there, and then always go one step above in how you present yourself in your attire and your grooming. Make it look like you are eager to be there and that you understand their culture. Also, knowing about what the company does. It's so embarrassing in an interview when they ask you, do you know a bit about our company? And if you have nothing to say, it's very clear that you're just going from interview to interview trying to land any job and that you're not really invested in this company. And every company wants to hire somebody who wants to be there. They want the longevity. So you need to show that you've taken an interest even before the interview. And even if you don't fully understand what the company does, then write down those questions you have because that's a really impressive thing in an interview to ask key questions that show you've done some research but that you're curious for more and at the end of the interview most interviewers will ask do you have any questions for me you definitely want to keep a question in your back pocket for that time i recommend something along the lines of about the, the position itself possibly what are the challenges that this role has faced? And then when they tell you what the challenges are, to have something else to back up, say, well, this is how I've actually overcome that in previous roles or faced similar things, and show your understanding. If you don't have any more questions to ask them, then simply ask them about the process that they have for their hiring and what when to expect to hear or, or not, um, and when they think they will be hiring and filling the position. Definitely have something to ask them though. So carrying on, um, and also keeping it simple, your resume, when you, when you type it out, don't make it too fancy. This is another way that I see people lengthen their resumes a little bit too much, and it's because they wanna put a graphic in, or a text box, or, or interesting font and colors. This is all distracting from the real subject matter, which is you. So focus on making sure that the important things, which are typically your job titles and the duration that you were at those positions really pop out. And under each one of those, you may have one key accomplishment um, that is worded in a way that shows how you've achieved something, not just filled a role um, in terms of using words like responsible for or managed or oversaw. Try to use action words, um, initiated or coordinated, things that show how you've increased something and added to the company. Because a hiring manager is constantly looking for someone to solve a problem within their company. There's something missing. They need to hire somebody to fill a role. So looking over the job description of what they're hiring for is gonna give you all kinds of clues to what they need. 
Maybe it's accuracy. Maybe they've had to let somebody go because so many flaws happened. So you'll want to be able to demonstrate in your previous roles how accurate you were. Even if that role was at a McDonald's, you can talk about how you use the cash register and that your till was always accurate. Find an example that is relevant to the position that you are applying to, and you really only need one. You don't need to describe your entire position. Trust me, a hiring manager, upon reading your resume, understands what the job title means. They will have a general idea. So they will be able to skim over, see the job titles, and it's only going to impact them if there's something, um, an achievement there that they could see being a contribution to their own company. We have another caller. Caller, do you have a question for me today? Yeah. Um, do you suggest that I go to a company to help write my resume? And if so, do you know any places that do that? There's plenty of places that actually offer free services. I would, I would be very cautious in actually paying for a service to have your resume reviewed. It really can depend on the position that you're going for. Um, but first of all, at least try some of the free services there are out there. I've done so myself. And in fact, Family Credit Management does have a free resume review service. All you have to do is email your resume to resume review, R-E-S-U-M-E, review, R-E-V-I-E-W, at familycredit.org. And I suggest as well that you put in that email the type of position that you're looking for. And one of our experts will actually take the time to go over your resume and write to you many tips that are specific to the job you're applying to. Now, we're not going to completely actually write your resume for you. That's usually what the paid services might do. But given, if you give in the legwork and do it yourself and take the suggestions, then only you really know what your experiences are, and you'll be able to pull them, draw them out and put them into your resume in a way that hopefully will land you that job. There are other services too, um, recruitment agencies, and many of the good Good ones are free where you can turn up and have a almost like an interview with a recruiter who will then search for jobs for you on your behalf. And they usually will actually rewrite your resume as well. And it's in their interest to find you a job because wherever hires you may pay some commission on part of your, your wage for a, a time period, sometimes three to six months. Um, but I have actually used that in the past to land myself in some really fortunate positions that may have been hard to get my foot in the door otherwise wise, but because they trusted the recruitment agency, I was able to get that interview. So definitely worth doing your research, going online, looking up reviews, real reviews that aren't just posted on the company's website, but that you find from websites, forums where people want to help each other and give advice. So do your research, but please, uh, Family Credit has that free service, uh, resume review at familycredit.org that is available for you to use and you will usually have your review back to you within one week. That's a very good question though, and it's always worth having help. Even if it's just having somebody else, a good friend or a parent or um, somebody who works in a business that you aspire to, uh, don't be afraid to let people look over your resume and take the constructive criticism and feedback and try not to take it personally. It's a very difficult thing to narrow down sometimes a lot of experience onto one page or if you're just out of school um, and haven't had much experience to figure out what you can put on there that shows your drive and your motivation and your desire to work for the company you're applying to. So um, after looking at what might disqualify you, what are the most important parts? What do you really need to have on your resume? And like I said before, the job titles are really what the hiring manager is looking for. And then they can delve deeper into all of your intricacies and your skills and hobbies and um, interests. So you want to keep things in your back pocket for that interview. See your resume as an opportunity to strike intrigue. Um, you definitely want to have the dates of your employment on there. 
And don't feel that you're fooling the employer by only putting the year. If you put 2017 to 2017, they're probably going to assume that it was only one month you were at that position. So you're not really doing yourself any favors. Go ahead and put the months on there. Don't be afraid if there are some gaps. Those are some things that you can explain in person. We do have another caller. Oh, hi. Um, okay, so I just had a job interview a couple of days ago, and I still haven't heard anything back from them. Do you think it's a good idea if I try to um, check back with them and give them a call? Excellent question, and well done on getting that interview. And I know how excruciating it can be in the following days waiting to hear and just curious about what's going on and the temptation to call is great. And this is why it is very important when you're in the interview to ask the question about their hiring process. Because otherwise you don't know if they're conducting interviews for possibly another week. Or maybe they're looking to hire at the end of the month. Um, and in the meantime, you feel like harassing them and calling repeatedly, which I really don't recommend. Unless you have a valid reason that you could use, say you're going out of town and you want to make sure they can get a hold of you or give them different contact information I wouldn't um, I wouldn't pursue calling them one thing I can recommend is sending a follow-up thank you email and if you're still within the first couple of days of having that interview I would say it's not too late to do that to use whatever email address was provided to you or however you applied and send a message thanking the interviewer and the HR department for their consideration name something you really enjoyed or that would make you look forward to hearing from them. And that's something that does go over well. And in many cases for myself while I'm hiring has caused me to go back and look at that applicant again um, and even bring them to the top of the pile. So it's all in the manner that, of which you do it. Um, try your hardest not to be a pest to them. And they're very busy in, the mo in most cases and have a lot of applicants to sort through. Um, and imagine if all of them were calling. It wouldn't, it wouldn't make you stand out. So do it in a way that makes you gracious and grateful for the time that they spent with you. And an email often can portray that. So what other things do you need to include on there? Also, contact information, believe it or not, often gets missed out or too much personal information is sometimes put in. I would avoid putting gender, uh, birth date, even your home address. At most, you could put your city, but most importantly, you just need to have your email, your phone number, and if you have any kind of social uh, posts that, like LinkedIn, where you can actually put a lot more detail than you could on your resume, and in LinkedIn, you have people who are able to verify those skills. And so it's like an added reference to your resume. So if you have a LinkedIn profile, include that there too. But make sure you keep that up to date because having a poorly planned LinkedIn can be just as ineffective as having a poorly planned resume. So make sure that they line up with the dates that you've put for your employments. Um, and that's where you don't have to put every single employment on your resume. You could have all of your employment on LinkedIn, but only the relevant ones to the position you're applying to on your resume. And that's one way to keep it shorter and down to one page so that everything that they need to see is right there in front of them the moment they pick up your resume. Other things that uh, you could use to um, draw attention on your resume. Um, like I said before, the action wording is very important. If you have one bullet point uh, or up to two per position, I would make sure they're very concise and quantifiable. So instead of just saying that you managed a certain team, you could talk about how many people were in that team and what the team did and the way that you accomplished something through that or improved a process. So I really hope that this was helpful for you and that uh, we had some great callers and great questions today, but please feel free to get in touch with us um, 
You can reach us at our website at www.familycredit.org. And they even have live chat options on there. So if you don't feel like talking on the phone, you can actually click the chat bubble and get financial advice. Or if you can't remember the email that you want to send your resume to, which is resume review at familycredit.org, um, somebody there will be able to tell you. But you also are welcome to call 1-800-994-3328 and speak to somebody from our company. Everybody is really friendly. So um, thank you thank you very much for tuning in to me today and for all the great questions. And uh, we'll be here same time next week. And we hope that this was helpful for you and good luck on your job hunt and hope you land your dream job soon.